Hi, welcome to this episode of the Lightning Process Podcast with me, Dr. Phil. Last time I talked about coaching within the Lightning Process and the idea of self-coaching. Go and check that out if you've not listened to it already, because this follows on from the conversations about coaching. It's not actually all included within the Lightning Process, but I thought it'd be an interesting thing to talk about. And that's the idea of how the coach asks questions. This comes from a lot of work in NLP, which is a brilliant methodology for understanding how people do things successfully. And this looks at how people goal set effectively. And it very much links to the ideas of neuroplasticity we talked about before. So in the lightning process, we recognize if you're steering yourself down some neurological paths that aren't useful, you need to shift and change into different neurology because that does have an effect on your physiology. So how do we do that? We've talked already about coaching, being kind to yourself, starting to talk to yourself in a different way, but we can be even more strategic. We can ask ourselves, okay, well, that's what we were doing. What do we want? Where do we want to head? And this big question, what do you want? It's a central part of the lightning process. But there is a bigger conversation around this that I thought I'd go into in some detail in the next two episodes. And this is useful if you're doing the lightning process, or if you've never done the lightning process and you just want to shift something in your life, this is a really, really effective way to set goals. You may have heard of goal setting, smart goals, all of those are derived from this particular pattern, which is called in NLP, well-formed outcomes, which means creating an outcome, a goal, a desired thing that you want, but designing it in a way that it's much, much more likely to happen because of which parts of your neurology you're switching on. So let's start with the most simple part of this, which is, what do you want? Commonest way that people will answer this, and I'm sure you've noticed this, is they'll tell you what they don't want. I don't want that. I don't want to have Chinese food today. I don't want a gin and tonic. I don't want to overeat. I don't want to get cross with my kids. I don't want to sit in front of the TV all day like I usually do. Now, what's interesting, as you may remember from an earlier episode, as soon as we say those words, we're actually stimulating that part of our neurology. So I work with teachers a lot. Teachers often say, don't hit that. Don't hit him. Now, what's interesting in the word hit, there's an instruction, a reminder of what the action of hitting is, and then you're more likely to hit them. Uh, the research I talked about, that if you say to somebody, don't think about pain, they, they will think about pain. It will trigger that neurology. So got to make sure, first thing, that this answer is saying what you want rather than what you don't want. Now, having worked with humans for decades, uh, and I'm sure you've noticed this, that people will often tell you what they don't want, particularly if they've got health problems. You know, you'll say, well, what do you want? I just don't want to have this pain anymore. Now, that's a completely reasonable thing to say. Just wish I wasn't stressed. But what's fascinating about this there's a kind of a glitch in our makeup that we do this, is that each time we say that, we're actually building more pathways. So if you have a physical problem and you talk about it a lot, you will actually build the neurology just by talking about it. This is problematic. Let's say we see our doctor, we're bound to be talking about our problem. We need to start to change our conversations as much as we can. So if you're feeling stressed or you're feeling dizzy or your heart's racing or your gut feels in pain, when you answer the question, what do you want? You really want to make sure you're saying what you do want. And what's fascinating is when people start to talk about what they want, they find it difficult to start with. It's almost like they don't have the neurology for it. So you'll say to someone who's had long term problems with mobility, so they've got stiff joints. Well, what do you want? They go, well, for it not to be stiff, obviously. Well, can you express that in a way that doesn't involve those words? And as soon as they engage with that question, they find they don't really have any answer, that they, they almost the cupboard is bare of the words they want. So if you've got a particular health issue and you're listening to this, ask yourself that question, what do I want? And you may be surprised that most of your answers are, not this, free from this, relief from this. And we need to change that because neurologically, that is just going to take us further down this rut run that we don't want to go down. So that's our first question. Making sure the answer is 
positive in terms of what it is, it is that we are trying to achieve. Imagine you say to uh, an architect who's building a house for you, they say, what do you want? He goes, I want a bungalow. Right? Great, <laughs> it's useful, but what do you want? Neither do I want a palace. Excellent, I don't want it pink. You know, there are a lot of things you may not want, but that doesn't help him to get started on making the plans. And that is why that question is so important. Really thinking about what it is that you want. Any goal setting, whether it's health or just a, a life goal, what is it that you want? The second half to this is you also need to make sure it's something that you can actually deliver. And this is a massive problem people get into. Often they'll say things like, I really want me and my mum, my neighbour, to have a good relationship. Oh, that's great, it's a, it's a really lovely thing, of course you would want that. The problem is that it's not something you can be responsible for entirely because it involves somebody else. They've got to also want that. Another example, classic example, is people say, I want my husband to be nicer to me. I want the interviewer to ask me simple questions. All these things are, of course, desirable, but not within your power to deliver. And if we set our goals based on things we can't control, we can't change, we can't be in charge of, then we're going to be in trouble. So how do we turn this around? Well, what you want to do instead is ask yourself, OK, if I want, say, a great relationship with my neighbour, which is something I can't really deliver because it involves them as well, you want to ask yourself, OK, if I had that, well, how, what, what could I do that would give me the best chance of achieving that? What could I do that would give me the best chance of achieving that? And it could be I could be in a different state of mind when I chat to them. I could change the tone of my voice when I talk to them instead of going, Whoa. I could invite them round for a cup of tea. I don't know. But starting to think, well, what can I do rather than hoping this magical thing will occur when I don't have the power to change it. Or if you say, what I want is I want to have um, my husband be nicer to me. Okay, well, what, what can you do? What could you do that could make that happen? I could have a conversation with him. Okay. You want to be a bit more specific. This is another very important part. In smart goals, this is the FS specific. Is what kind of conversation do you want to have? And probably more importantly, what state do you want to be in? What mood, what, what vibe do you want to bring to this? Because there can be lots of ways you could have that conversation. So that's the very first question. Really simple question, but actually it's taken me eight minutes to talk about it because it's so nuanced and complex. There are lots more questions I'll come to in a minute. But this first question, what do you want? There's so many ways this can go wrong if we don't get really clear about it needs to be positive and it needs to be something that we can actually be responsible for delivering. What do you want? Ask yourself that question. Whatever you're coming up with today, ask yourself, well, what do I want? Okay. Another thing that often people do with this particular question is, is they ask, what do they want? You know, what would make them happy? And that's, again, a really important question to notice because it doesn't factor you in. And you do need to be factored into this question. Now, of course, sometimes we need to take care of other people, but some people get into the habit of taking care of everybody else all the time and shuffling themselves down to the bottom of the pile. So if that's another pattern that you're running where you're constantly thinking, what do other people want? What's going to keep them happy? What's going to get them off my back? There is some value to that question, but it's also really important to kind of go, and me, what do I want to? Hope that's useful. I'll see you guys on the next one.